In this video, we're looking at creating a custom word report based on the form that we've built previously. Typically, what you might find is most businesses will always start with a paper-based form that you're migrating into Colvadocs, and you'll typically start with a Word document that's your template that you're printing and handing out to users. So in this case, what we might find is we've got a Word document here that contains the structure and the layout of the document that we're creating. So like you can see on the screen, we have our name, our surname, our email address. We've got a checklist of some of the questions that we're asking the users to answer, and then it's a table to allow them to answer as many questions as they like. Once that's been transferred into Colvadocs, like we've seen in previous videos, we have all of the questions that are set up in the form builder, requesting the name, surname, email, some of those questions, and then we have a repeater. Now repeaters are a way to create fields that are repeatable within a form. So you might have one or a hundred of these entries, so the user can extend and add as many of these responses as they need. Coming back into the Word document, the way that this works is you simply have to map each of those fields into the Word document and upload it. The benefits of a Word document is that you can completely customize it as you see, see fit. So this can be branded, it can contain your logo, it can contain any other information that you like and really enhance the customer experience when they receive one of these reports. So in this case, what we'll do is we're going to come through and start copying and pasting each of the data names and telling Word where we want to put these responses. So here, if we want to now start mapping the data, for example, for name, if you come back into Colvadox and click into the name field, you may have noticed there's a data name in the top right hand corner. This is a unique reference for that particular field, and we're going to use this to tell the system where we want to put the response for that particular question. So in this case, what we can do is come and click on copy data name to clipboard here, and then come into Word and paste that into that box. So by clicking on the button, it copies this data name with all of the formatting around it into that box. So this is a placeholder, just like you would have seen in the previous videos. It just looks slightly different for the Word integration. What we can do is just repeat this process for each of those fields and add it in. Now, one thing that you might find is it's easier rather than clicking into each of those fields, as we saw earlier with the context menu, is right clicking on that field and select copy data name. This way, it's very easy just to jump back and forth, copy each of the data names and map them out into the document to tell the system where we want to put the data. Now that all of those are in, the one thing to address is this table. Now, typically you'll have this table with, uh, let's say 10 lines that you're allowing the users to enter. In Colvadox, using a repeater, you don't need to define the amount of rows within the table. What we can do is simply delete all of these and allow Word to generate as many rows as it needs based on the responses within the form. The repeaters work in the exact same way that we can right click, copy the data name, and when we paste that in here, you'll see that it includes a prefix of questions, which is the repeater name, and then the field name. This is how the system knows that it needs to create a row for each particular entry. Now that we have all of those in there, the last thing that we need to do is save this and upload it to the system so it can use it next time the workflow runs. Within the workflow, rather than generating a report as we had earlier, what I'm going to do is update this to send word report. And then under our report type, we can change that to custom. At this point, what you can do is select and choose the file the Word document that we've just created. And again, all of the report file name, save as PDF options and so on apply. As we go through, if we click save workflow, we can now go through and process one of those forms. Over here, I've got a form that I've completed earlier with some responses where we have my name, surname, email address, some of those answers. And as you can see, we've got two entries within that repeater with a couple of questions that we want to submit. If we come through and click send and have a look at the PDF, the system's emailed us. When we open this up, we'll now see that the PDF has used that word template that we've uploaded. It's added all of the responses in here and also created two rows with the two questions that we have. Now, moving forward, one thing to bear in mind here is if you use a word template, each time you change the form, if let's say you add or delete new columns, you will need to update the word template. You need to do this because you're telling Word exactly where you want to put each response for those particular questions. So if we come through and we, let's say, want to add another field into here, let's say date of birth, 
We will now just need to repeat that by coming back into Word, selecting this, deciding where we want to put the data, as simple as this, and copying that data name and popping it in there. The process for updating the Word document is very similar. All we'll need to do is come back into Workflow, select the workflow, and as you can see, we've already got the custom file uploaded. Just click on the bin icon, click delete, and then go through, select, and upload the file again. Lastly, click Save Workflow, and that will upload the document into the workflow. What you may find down the line is that you don't have a copy of this document, or multiple people might be working on the same document. If you do make any changes, just to make sure you've got the latest version, come into the workflow and click the download button here. That will then download that file onto your machine that you can then edit and then re-upload just to make sure you're using the latest copy as you go through. That concludes the short video on creating the Word template. Please do jump in, give it a go, and if you have any questions at all, just get in touch or you're more than happy to help.